morning. It's uh, April 15th, tax day on uh, 7.45 in the morning, I believe. And this is a sample taken from a piece of sheet metal in my front yard. Uh, the methodology is to use two or three uh, small pieces of paper towels and then wipe up a sheet metal surface with a paper towel and see what the readings are. So this is relatively high here and St. Louis, Missouri. Now what's interesting about this contamination is is it uh, becomes unreadable after approximately two and a half hours and I'm not sure if that's because of a short half-life or because it's off-gassing from the uh, from the rainwater. Uh, neither one is good because if it is off-gassing from the rainwater <clears throat> that means as you're driving through rush hour traffic and all those truck tires are spinning it up that you're getting a pretty good dose of uh, radioactive gas in your car so it would be wise if you're driving through the rain to have your car set on uh, environmental systems in your car are set on uh, recirculate and defrost if possible. So let's look at the sample itself. There's the sample. Now the other interesting thing is, is I've noticed that the uh, radioactivity in these samples let's see about a little bit further tends to be drawn uh, to particulate dirt or dust in the sample. So again, I'm not sure what's coming down. But, uh, if we assume the half-life is very short, then it would be barium. But uh, if that's the case, then people on the West Coast would be losing their hair right about now. So. My best guess is it's uh, either a xenon gas or uh, one of the iodine isotopes with a short half-life or one that is in solution as a gas in the rain. But again, it's still diff difficult to tell. You can tell with the Geiger counter not over the, uh, the substance that it reads pretty low. 